Hey everyone, I hope you had a great day today and if not, I hope this video will cheer you up a bit or inspire you. In this video, I'm going to talk about the process of my newest oil painting titled The Fortune Teller, which most of you have probably already seen in my latest YouTube video, but this was just a little preview in this video. I'm going to show you the full process. Real quick before we start, if you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and real-time lessons available for you on my Patreon site, in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos, you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. On top of that, all videos are downloadable and you can keep them forever. For just $5 a month, you get instant access to over 70 painting videos. That's pretty neat right? And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of underrated but even longer real-time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them, then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash Fortune Teller as well will be available as a real-time video for my $10 patrons. I also recorded the first layer of paint on her face with a second camera to display my mixing process. This way you will be able to fully understand how I mixed and painted the skin tones. And now back to the painting process. Like all my oil paintings, I started this one with creating a Photoshop mockup first. This alone took me probably two days. I really get carried away when I do Photoshop mockups because there are just too many possibilities on how to do a painting. The difference with this mockup, however, was that I took the famous oil painting Carnation Lily, Lily Rose from John Singer Sargent as a reference for the painting. This is just my absolute favorite painting of all paintings probably. I really love the expression and the dynamic and just the colors. So to honor this wonderful masterpiece, I incorporated some of it in my own artwork. And after having finished my Photoshop mockup, I transferred it with graphite transferring paper onto my canvas before I began to paint. I usually underpaint my canvas with oil or acrylic. Here I underpainted it with golden acrylic paint to have this beautiful shimmering ground which I really adore to paint on. And my canvas is a fine cotton canvas and I also built the canvas frames myself because I have just more options which sizes I can do and also what material what fabric I can choose for the canvas if you're curious about how to build a canvas yourself I once did a video about that link is in the description and you can also find all materials that I used to create this painting down in the video description for this painting I chose to begin with the very finest details that I could find which were her eyes I'm holding my mouth stick which is just a wooden stick that gives my hand and my wrist stability and I used this very handy brush to start drawing the outlines of her eyes. After having filled in all the outlines I began adding the white of the eyes which is never white and I continued with the irises and the skin around her eyes. This painting technique is just one of many painting techniques that I use and it's always different. It's not really that you have to do it this or the other way. Sometimes I just feel like when I want to paint something very realistic or very fine, I choose this technique because then in the first layer I can already add a lot of details and sometimes when I want to paint a little bit more loose and rough I fill out entire areas like the portrait portion and other areas in one session and I don't really pay attention to much detail and this depends on the vision that I have for my painting. For this painting I wanted to have a super detailed and realistic face and I wanted the rest to be very abstract and rough and wild and maybe like a little bit like a modern abstract painting so I thought the perfect contrast for that would be a very realistic face and in order to do that 
I continued with the skin tones around her eyes and then along the cheeks and the nose and I pretty much just mix one skin tone and then apply this particular color on areas on the painting where I can find that color too so that I don't have to mix the same color over and over again. This would annoy me a lot <laughs> and it also is a little bit a waste of time because it just makes sense to fill up some areas of the painting if you have the exact same color on your brush. At least this makes sense for me. <laughs> I also really enjoyed to work in transparent layers which you can see in the portion of her neck because then I can see those rough brush strokes and I can also see some of the underlying underpainting come through and it kind of reminded me of the old masterpieces like Sargent's work where you still see some brush strokes and translucent areas so I really wanted to keep that and also keep some rough abstractions and brush strokes in areas where I normally don't do that like the neck for example. I slowly filled in all the skin tones in her face which took me I think two hours and I know that even though I tried to include as many details as possible possible. I know that the first layer is never be able to provide a full coverage and be 100% opaque. Instead the first layer will always be a little bit rough and at a certain point you can't build up more paint and you won't be able to make more details. So at that stage where it was still rough but I couldn't add more details I just kept it like that and continued with the remaining parts of the painting. I actually managed to fill up the entire painting in one day, which is very, very rare for me. But I decided to work long at that day and also because I didn't have a lot of details in the background, like roses or butterflies or other things that needed more attention, I could fill up the background and the hair relatively quickly. After having filled out the entire painting, <laughs> which made me so proud, I had to wait for a couple of days for it to dry before I could continue working on her face. And man, this was very difficult. So because I wanted it to be super fine and realistic and detailed, I had to work <laughs> exactly like that. And this took so long. I think for the face, I probably worked the whole day just to make it very smooth and very detailed and also symmetrical even though I had this perfect Anna drawing which I traced from my reference photo it is still super difficult to get the symmetry right so in order to to achieve that I walked back from a painting like every 10 minutes and checked the eyes from the distance and checked the mouse and checked the nose and just tried to correct it and made it as symmetrical as I could and in the end it worked but it was super difficult. Also in order to paint the lashes I could had made it a little bit more easier than I actually did it so I don't know but I couldn't wait and I was super impatient and I wanted the lashes to be finished in the second layer of the face. The face has only two layers and I didn't want to wait another layer before I could add the lashes. I was just super impatient. So in order to add the lashes when you add them on wet oil paint they will completely smudge and they won't look fine. So what I had to do is use a very small and dry brush and very very carefully dab 
on every individual lash until it was smoothed out and blend into the skin of the eyelids. So I could have had it easier if I would have just waited until the face had dried and just add the lashes later on. Okay, then they wouldn't be blended into the skin, but it would have been easier. But nevertheless, I'm very happy with how the lashes turned out. Then I painted her lips, which also needed a lot of attention, especially the border around it. So I don't like it when lips have harsh edges. So I always make the edges and the border of the lip very smooth. I also want to have the exact same color, this cherry red. And so it was definitely difficult to both get the right color and also smooth out the borders in just one session. But luckily it worked after like half an hour or so or an hour or so. <laughs> um, yeah, this painting just took a lot of time. But I am so so happy with it. Then I painted the hair and I chose a large brush to do that because this is very straight hair and for me this is the easiest technique and it looks the best. And with a couple of brush strokes the hair was finished. But this doesn't always work as good as it did with this painting. Um, this only works good with really simple hair and with everything that is curly or wavy I need a lot more time. Then I worked on the background and added a little more shapes here and there but I wanted it to be abstract. And then came one of the favorite parts of my painting process, the washes and I just love the pinks and the yellows and it just gave the painting so much. I really enjoyed this and then I had to to let the painting dry again for I think three or four days. And then after the washes had dried I decided to intensify those washes because when they dry they fade a little bit and sometimes how they dry looked a little bit messy but I really love what shapes they create. So I just filled them in with the same color that I used for the wash and this way I felt the painting just looked a bit more tidy or clean and not so messy and I really loved the result. Then in the end I found out that my canvas had a little fold and before I could continue working on it I had to re-stretch the canvas again with canvas wedges. Those are little wooden wedges which you can just insert in the back of the canvas bars where you can find little holes that are made for those wedges and then this fold was gone. But then I still wasn't completely happy with my painting and I decided to add some additional colors and translucent layers which I didn't record though. Especially like the last final steps I kind of have to concentrate like super super hard and focus a lot and when I have the camera recording I just can't. I kind of feel nervous and a little bit stressed when the camera is on. Um, so to get a hundred percent to the result I want, I can't do it on camera. <laughs> so I will just show you the final painting in which you might be able to see the last steps that I added. As I mentioned in the beginning, I titled her The Fortune Teller. I did have other titles in mind like Take Me to the Carnival or take me to the circus, which I also find very cool because it reminded me of the song White Unicorn by Wolfmother, which I find just so good and such an amazing song. And when I was young, I found the circus and the carnival extremely exciting. I really loved all those market booths and the ghost rides and all the colorful wagons and just the atmosphere, all the fancy food that you only get at the carnival. So this was really magical for me when I was young and this painting really reminded me of this feeling. And I thought Fortune Teller would be a great title because she could be a oracle somewhere on the carnival in a tent. So yeah, this was the idea behind the painting. Of course, she's not a regular girl. She's somewhat magical and mysterious as all my girls are that I paint. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the painting and the process. And today I didn't write a script. It is rather late in the evening, so I hope you don't mind. And if you liked the video, don't forget to comment, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So I see you in the next one. Bye.